video is a response to Zinnia Jones's The Pursuit of Technological Immortality. Hello Zinnia, I've been a pretty constant follower of yours since you appeared on the Thinking Atheist podcast, so if you vehemently disagree with this video, you know who to blame. Seth! Anyway, I suppose I'll start with what you said about overpopulation. I don't feel that you really argued against that. You're basically saying that just because we haven't already dealt with that problem, we shouldn't abandon a course of technology that might further cause problems with this problem. I don't quite see that as... Yes. Maybe we can solve overpopulation, but if so, we'd better get around to it. It's actually a pretty big problem. You probably already realized this, so this is more for anyone else watching this. In the last half a century or so, the population on this planet has doubled, okay? And it's not, it's, it's an exponential growth. So we need to deal with this. And I really don't think we should be pursuing anything that could cause further problems for that before we have dealt with it. Honestly, the way I see it, sooner or later, governments are going to have to impose limits on how many children can be born and, you know, things of that nature. I realize this is controversial, but I think we're just putting off the inevitable, so... Your rhetoric is good on the whole, you know, do you prefer people to die? I don't want people to die, but I do think it is necessary. And not for any religious reason. I think religious reasons are quite useless. If they're arguing for something good, then you can come up with good arguments for it, and ditto if they're arguing against something bad. And maybe death doesn't always give meaning to life, but... That'd be my cell phone. We, part of how we define things is by their ending, by the fact that they will not go on forever. What would a work day be if we didn't go home at the end of the day and rest? What would a vacation be if we didn't, didn't come back to the house and, you know, come back home from the vacation and get back to work afterwards? you know, the day if we didn't have the night, and vice versa. There are already people who go to extreme lengths to feel alive, you know, parachuting and the like, without necessity. It's because they don't feel like life is exciting enough. They need to feel like death is imminent before they feel alive at all. If you look at how people behave when they think nothing to lose is getting to be a bit of a cliche in like action movies and you know with you know, once you have nothing to lose you can really risk your really risk your life to get revenge but when people don't think something bad will happen to them, regardless of what they do, their actions tend to become either outwardly destructive or self-destructive. This goes for kings and the like, celebrities more recently. I don't think that anybody really enjoys, and this is just me speaking for myself, you know, if we got a chance to see someone experience it and who would 
argue against it, then, you know, yeah. But I don't think that we get particular enjoyment from eternal life. There's not really a certainty that we would keep enjoying life. Sooner or later we'd run out of things to do. And if we did take on another form, I think everybody who even considers that need to think about what that might do for the quality of life. We've always had to deal with death and face it. And I'm not saying that just because we've always had to, that means we should always have to. But I do think that this is one of those things where death is something necessary. I, I don't think that realistically we'd want to live forever. It's nice that you do add that, you know, people would have the choice, but I don't know that I see that many people using that. I think that our minds would keep telling us, no, you have to keep, you know, go on living and go on producing, but I mean, in, in a way that it is a good thing that that choice is usually taken for us, you know, for thousands of years by now, religion has been trying to tell people that when they die, it will not last forever, and yet the fear of death persists. I don't think we can get rid of it. I think that's a bit of the allure here, the thought that then we wouldn't have to fear death. I don't think we would ever stop. There are still ways that it could all end. Another thing is that unless we, through this technological immortality, greatly reduce the amount of natural resources we'd need to sustain ourselves. And even if we did manage, sooner or later we would probably have to stop procreating, unless, you know, we're talking like, I think I saw some of the comments suggesting, you know, colonies on other planets, but, you know, that's again something that's a bit out in the future, and before we can be sure, before we can be absolutely sure that that's possible, I don't think we should pursue something like this. If we did have to stop procreating, I'm not a father myself, and I don't particularly intend to procreate, but the reasons are not I'm not going to go into them here. In fact, I'm really not that big on children in general, but even I can see that there's just something incredible about the way new eyes look at the world, the way a child thinks and reasons, the the things it notices that we've long since forgotten. I don't think that eternal life is going to give us something that will make up for that. I can't imagine that. The longer you're around, the more used to things you get. Especially the things that don't change much.
and I personally can't see any reason to give up the joy of you know experiencing the world through vicariously through the eyes of children and once again that's coming from someone who doesn't even like children all that much and if we did one more point before I finish we have been postponing death scientifically for a long time and obviously that is a good thing it's a good thing that we're living you know five times as long or whatever the numbers are but postponing something is one thing and actually trying to get rid of it is an entirely other again I believe a couple of the commenters already pointed out the the whole recycling of natural resources of you know that once we die that becomes you know that gets used by some some other part of nature I think it's it's just arrogant to think that you know to try to defeat death in that kind of way I mean I'm not saying that it's a good thing that people are completely forgotten or something like that but that's what memories are for that's why we have digital media that's you know that's one of the, that, that's probably the greatest worth anyway you know to be able to look back and remember someone or be told of someone that you you know you did not that did not live to see your birth you know and if we did perfect this technology if we did get into a situation where procreation no longer occurred we would in effect be saying that our generation is as good as it's ever gonna get that no generation to come after us deserves a chance to live I would def determine that as the pinnacle of arrogance thank you for your attention